What's up, everybody? Welcome to the BJJ Bounce Podcast. My name is Matt Vega from Most Nation. This is Kenny Wilson. What's going on, my man? Not much. Back at it again. Um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to La Mala Vida for sending me some merch the other day. Always keeping me looking good. Shout out to you guys. Told them I would wear them on their shirt on the podcast. So nice. So hey, man, you just want to send my boy some stuff? He's right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Um, Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, today, I kind of want to talk about as promotions come and uh, the winter promotions are coming up. You, this happens every year. You see some guys get promoted and you're like, man, I beat that guy all the time. Right. Like, why? Why is he getting promoted? And I'm not getting him promoted. Like, this is like a huge thing. And to me, this happened to me when I was a white belt. Like, I was like stuck at white belt for like five years. And uh, guys I just handle in class were always getting promoted. Now, granted, I don't, it, for me, it had different circumstances, but I think there's different reasons why you get promoted and why some people don't. Right. So, um, for me, when you get the promoted, sometimes coach will promote you because he wants you to be, he wants to motivate you into your next belt. Right. Sometimes he's like, oh, man, this guy, he's not coming to class as much. He's not doing this. He's, you know, he's like, it looks like he's lost his fire. Sometimes a new belt will reignite that fire. Okay. So I've seen coaches promote for that. <clears throat> I've also seen um, coaches hold you back because, you know, you he wants you to get it good at something else and you're not getting there. It's like, yeah, you're good on top. Right. You're not pulling guard, though. You're not showing anything else. Yeah. You're one dimensional grappler. So sometimes that will hold you back. Um, have you experienced any of this, anything like that? I think because I started at such an older age that I kind of had a, maybe, I don't want to say a better understanding, but like a, I was more at peace with the fact that like somebody may promote faster than me or somebody may promote sooner than me, even if I can beat them. Right. But there's, there's gotta be, there's, there's a bigger plan to it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's, there's, there's. Criteria that I don't understand because I'm only a white belt, right. you know. So you had the right mindset. That's the right mindset coming in there, like, hey man, I'm just a white belt, whatever. Right. I definitely wanted to be a blue belt, but I remember maybe my first promotion that I attended and get seeing some guys get belts and seeing some guys that I thought, you know, in all my white belt knowledge, <laughs> I'm like, hey, he should have been promoted, and he didn't, and I'm like. Clearly, I, there's something that I don't know. You know, now I mean? there's IBGF. Like, if you're comp if you're a competitor and you're competing a lot, you know, you have to pretty much be at each belt for two years. So it's kind of like if I get promoted a guy early and I know he competes a lot, I kind of effed him. Yeah, he can't really compete now. You know what I mean? It's really, like, they look in, they look into that too. It's a it's a it's a weird thing. So it's like you got to do your two years if you're an active competitor. You get promoted early. Sometimes you can win worlds and then like you know, get promoted that way by winning. But like for the most part, especially like at the higher belts, there's like a time limit where you have to serve your time at that belt. Well, the first school I was at, the coach made it very clear that he would like, he was very active in com competitions himself and he would like other people to be as well. And he said the quickest way in his eyes for him to promote would be as if you compete and you win. 100%. And that's 100% true. If you go and you're winning all your matches. Right. And you're like, hey, man, this guy's winning everything. Right. I can't, like, hold him back. I can't sandbag him. Right. Like, he needs to go on to the next belt. We're in the same aspect. I'm at, you know, the gym I'm at now. He's, I think at the last promotion, I think maybe there were some questions. You know, like, hey, how come I didn't give? I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm just making an right. assumption here. But. My coach came out in a class after promotions and made it very, like, he kind of laid it out. Like, hey, look, not everybody here is competing. Some guys are just casual. Some guys will show up five days a week to train and they don't ever want to compete and that's fine. Um, some guys, he goes, he goes, but they're showing up and they're consistent. And he goes, that's what I look for more than anything is just being consistent, seeing constant growth with that person. And then wanting to be better at jujitsu. You could be better than a guy. Yeah. But he doesn't compete a lot. And you're like, I do compete and I beat him. How right. come I'm still stuck here at blue 
And he just got his purple belt. Right. Well, he's not representing the school. He's not representing professor on a stage. Right. A comp competitor will belt slower generally than a hobbyist after work. Unless you're just smashing grapple. every competition, gold every right. time. But like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, if yeah. you're just, you're just going in every day, consistency, like right. you said, you're going to promote faster, but you're not competing. But your coach, if you're competing, your coach is like, hey, I want you, I'd rather you be the baddest blue. Right. Than a okay purple. I'd rather you be blue and not struggling with blues, but giving purples a little bit. You know what I mean? That right. kind of a, yeah, yeah. I, so that's why it holds you back a little bit. Yeah. The comp guys will always get held back slower. Plus, a lot. if you ask most guys who are really into competition, they're not they're not dying for that next belt. Right. right. They're like, nah, dude, right. I need to try Worlds one more time. Right. Like, I almost had it last year. Like, right. they're like, every guy I know who's like really, really, really into competing a lot, they're not in a hurry to get that next belt. Right. They're like, no, I need to get this. Or unless they're winning. If they're winning, they're like, okay. But they all the ones who are diehard. They want to win that worlds. They want to win that pans. They want to get those that big hardware before they advance. You know, they want that on their resume. Yeah. So, to me, I feel like that is the difference. Like sometimes, and sometimes, guys, hey, if you get belted early, if you feel like you got like some some coaches will belt on attendance. And to me, I'm not for that. I don't believe in attendance based. Promotions. There's a there's a school that I know uh, that you literally have cards that you scan See, every I time you that. go to class. I hate that. And they they clock your hours in class and and because hours doesn't determine skill, right? What if you're training in, in, in that aspect? What if you're training outside at other gyms as well? What if you're going and doing privates with with people that you know? What I mean, like you're you're not taking those hours into account, right? But I mean, those hours technically. Your coach is gonna be like, "Hey, this one with me, though, bro." Like, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's you know, um, I to me, I feel like attendance based promotions they suck. Yeah. Because you, it's it's like you should get belted on the next you collect. If you collect the next, the belts will come. Like it doesn't matter if how many times you come. If fucking if Jim shows up five days a week and he's still not. Be that good like you should hold them back even as a hobbyist to me if i ran a school it wouldn't be easy belts yeah uh, i mean i think i would allow i would do the two years i would you could get the brown belt if you're just a hobbyist with me but that black belt you could die a brown belt <laughs> you know what i mean like if he dies he dies you could die a brown belt <laughs> like you gotta get that like you gotta earn it to me like and i feel like Obviously, the guys who are punching the card, that's another reason. It's kind of like the stripes, right? right. It's like, oh, got to punch my card because it's forcing me to go. And I guess those guys will get better. You roll, you will get better. Yeah. But that shouldn't be the only white reason why you're getting promoted. You should no, be agree. getting promoted because you are a blue belt it's, or you are a purple belt. It's weird because there is no, like, defined criteria. You know what I mean? Right. Like sport wide, yeah. Testing, I don't believe in testing. Right, testing for your belt. Like I got my belt test. Like, what, what do you mean test? Yeah, the test has been the last two years. Two years of me rolling. Yeah, every day is a test. Yeah, you should be rolling every day. There's no belt test. And if you're paying for your belt test, go to another gym. You what are you buying your belt? <laughs> your belt should be earned. It should be right. already ready for you. Right now, if you have a thing where it's like, hey, if your professor is like, hey, if you get a belt. They're this much money, but you might not get a belt. If you're going in there like, Hey, I might not get one. Like, and it's not a test. Right. Then maybe there's, there's something there, but like you should not be paying for your belts. The belt should be given to you. Right. Like you, like that is, I've seen that. Well, I got my belt test. Like, let's be real though. Belts are like 30 bucks right. or less. Right. If, you, if you're paying 150 plus they dollars have a that month for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To me, like for two years, <laughs> if you've given this person five thousand dollars of your money, right? And I just <laughs> don't believe in. I don't. I don't believe in belt tests. I don't believe in attendance based uh, time card punching jujitsu right. gyms. I just that, to me, I just feel like show up, roll your professor. If you're there every day, your professor's gonna know you, right? And he's gonna know your skill because you're gonna roll with him. Do you feel like um, 
So you go to a large school. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot of people that go to that place. Yes. I feel like your professor is very good at remembering people. I have no idea how he does it. Yeah. I don't know how. Like I Maybe it's CTE for me. But I have. He has like a dictionary of names in his head. Yeah. Like he's that guy. He he remembers like 300 kids names. Yeah. Julian. I'm like, yeah, there's hundreds of people that go to that school. He knows their all name. And where, where they're at and, and belt wise. And I remember when I got my blue belt, he was there for the promotion and he called me out on like, Hey, just keep showing up. Keep being consistent. You missed three years when you, after you left me before you came back here, like he knew I'm like, yeah, he's crazy. Dude. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, hey, Poncho is crazy. With yeah. his brain. He's got good memory, man. Yeah. I wouldn't play that guy at the freaking memory game. <laughs> like he's, yeah, he's, he's very good at that. But yeah, I feel like the guys, some of the guys in these attendance based gyms, yeah. they'll get promoted super fast, like real fast. Things, you know, like, damn, he's already purple belt. Did you ever get any belt jealousy like that? Of course. When I was white belt, I, I would see guys that I'd beat every day because I didn't really sit back and think about this, right? Yeah. I'd sit back and be like, dude, I beat this guy. Why am I not getting belted? Like, I was like, this sucks. I was disgruntled and ticked off. But I had to take his uh, kind of like a emotional inventory or something. I don't know how, the specific phrase for it, but I remember watching somebody get belted in early on and uh, they were maybe less than a year into it and they got belted to blue mind you he won uh gracie worlds no gi Mm -hmm. and he came from like a a wrestling background and i remember in the beginning being really jealous about it yeah i mean but he's freak athlete the guy's and he's he's another guy obsessed with jiu-jitsu lives the jiu-jitsu lifestyle 365 days a year 24 7 um Later on, and that was that was something that was a me thing. You know what I mean? I it, looking back on it in hindsight now, one hundred percent he deserved it. But it, there was definitely I, I needed to take some inventory of like how I felt about things. You know what I mean? Like it was a it it, it shouldn't have bothered me the way that it did. You know what I mean? I was but, a white I was a white belt. What the, what the how am I gonna? But this have, guy was probably your your bunny rabbit. Now, this is when I this is my bunny rabbit philosophy in jiu-jitsu, okay? I feel like to get better at jiu-jitsu, you need to have a bunny rabbit. Now, a bunny rabbit is basically the greyhound race, you know, uh-huh. the rabbit on the track that they all chase. Chasing it, yeah. Everybody should have some guy in their class that's n- better than you. There's no chase in this guy. This guy's, he's a brown belt now. Okay, but there's a guy, he's better than you. Yeah. But no, he's your bunny rabbit. That's it. That's okay to have a badass bunny rabbit. Okay. <laughs> He's better than you, but you're like, every day you roll with him, you're like, that's, if I could just get that good, if I could just get his, good I have that him, now. Yeah. and you go for that guy, that's the guy every class. Oh, here you go. You fucked me up again. Damn. And oh, come back again. If you could get to his level, like I had it, I chased it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he didn't tap me today. Right. Oh, of that going driving home happy like yeah you didn't get me today like he right. tried to grab that sleeve i know he loves that sleeve he didn't let have that sleeve today everybody should have that bunny rabbit and that bunny rabbit will help you grow now if you're clicking the punch in the card it kind of defeats the purpose of the bunny rabbit right to to me like and, and that's why your belts can get real heavy and what i mean by if you're getting promoted fast because of attendance and next thing you know you're a purple belt you've only been training three and a half years three years and you're Okay, maybe you are a purple belt, but are you a legit purple belt? Right. Like, that how, belt is heavy. How are you faring against other purple belts in comps or open mats? Because the belt can get heavy. Yeah. And when you walk into a gym, and yeah, you look cool in warm-ups, oh, purple belt. Right. Great. But then when you roll... And next thing you know, hey, you're struggling with the blue belt. You're, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you're, yeah. oh, I'm, this purple belt just mangled me. That belt gets pretty heavy. And if you're walking around with a heavy belt where you're like, dude, this is like, I, I put this on and I have this target and I ain't ready for the smoke. Right. It could be a problem. And I feel like attendance-based gyms that when you're promoting on just on showing up, that's what happens. Yeah. Rather than just collecting necks. And once you collect the necks... 
there's no denying that you are. I was like, yeah, dude, I freaking, I, I am him. You ever feel like, um, I mean, you're at black belt now, so I guess you don't, you're, you're not going to really run into this anymore, but I've had it where like when I was a white belt, people would come up to me or, or in conversation, side conversations outside of the gym and whatnot. Be like, I think you're going to promote next promotion. Like you, you've got to, he's coach has got to. Oh, yeah, that's every, that, that's all the time. And I do that to, I do that to the lower belts. I'll go to my, Ooh, stay day. I'll start revving her back. I'll start revving her back. Like, oh, shit. Hey, I'm not not the one promoting anybody. I'm just there, dude. I'm just there for the ceremony and the pizza. You know what I mean? I'm there to eat, baby. It's all love here. You know what I mean? Like, I got my black gi on because it's picture day. It's good, dude. Like, you know what I mean? uh, But, like, I'll go up to guys like, hey, man, it's time. And and, and the higher belts talk about it. Like, who do you think? Do you think anybody's getting a black belt today? We're like, I don't know. I think maybe so and so or. That's a that's a thing in the yeah. group chat. I'm in the black belt group chat, and we talk about that all the time. Like, oh, who do you think it's this time? Well, well maybe, maybe. Uh, right. Does Poncho keep that stuff like close to his? Oh yeah, he can't get anything out of Poncho. No, no. Mm-mm. I don't know who's getting. What. Nobody knows until it happens. Then no, that's cool. He doesn't. He might tell. <laughs> he don't tell any of us. Yeah, I don't, not nothing from me. But um, so yeah, sometimes you're about to be heavy. So to me. I'm not for the um, attendance space. And a lot of wrestlers, guys who wrestle in high school have a good wrestling background. Yeah. They come in and they're doing great at what they're great white belts. Right. Wrestlers are fantastic white belts and they're great blue belts because they got the takedown game down. Right. And if you got the takedown game down, usually white belt, blue belt sweeps are not very good. So if you can win the takedown in your early tournaments, you win the fight. Right. Because people's back game ain't that solid. So, these blue belt or these wrestler guys will come in and they'll not get promoted and they get pretty mad because they're like, dude, I should have been or, or vice versa. Or they do get promoted faster. And the white belt is like, what the heck? Right. And I've been like, doing this for a year and a half and this guy's been here for six months. And he but just he's promoted. also been grappling for right. years in high school or, or since he was seven. Right. Yeah. So, so there's a difference, right? Yeah. So it all evens out. Yeah. It all evens out. Yeah. I would, I would say, I would say probably just based off of what I've seen in my, all my vast knowledge of jujitsu at this point, I would say that by purple belt, typically it's pretty, like it's pretty balanced. Most, most people that are at purple are usually around the same range. You know what I mean? I believe a, a legit purple belt, a legit purple belt is a black belt at something. Okay. To me, like just I, think, not all I, I heard Rogan say that. So, and I agree. I believe a, a jujitsu black belt or purple belt rather is good. Is a black belt at something. There's something he in his game that he does, whether it's him in side control or whether it's a certain sweep or you know a foot whatever. There's something he does that is very very high level. If it's not black belt, it's brown belt level. And like if you mess up and he gets you, if he gets you in the spot where he wants you, you're gonna have a tough time. Right. So especially the heavier you are, the heavier you are, you get a, a purple belt inside control on top of you, and he's he's been in side control. He loves it. He's high level side control. So I believe purple belt is the belt where you are advanced, and some spots in your game could be black belt level. That's a good way to look at it. And then brown belt is kind of like, I think we're going to do this in another episode of like what the belts mean. Brown belt is kind of like catching everything else up. And then being a polishing, you're a black belt, a brown belt, you're, you're, you're black belt at rolling. Right. But then being the black belt is now you're setting traps and you can also show people. That's the difference. So there's, there's black belt with white stripe and right. there's black belt with red stripe. Right. And until recently, I didn't understand what that meant. And I assumed the red was a T cause I've seen brown belts and purple belts with red, red bars as well. So I was like, that's Oh, instructor that's instructor bar. Okay. But then I also heard that you could be that a lot of people that will compete at black belt will compete with a white bar. No, no, I could be wrong, but to me, it's just a cool thing. It's okay. Like, this is the cool thing to do right now. Right. And it's kind of like, I'm not here to teach right now. I'm here to smash your ass. Gotcha. Like I'm all business right now. So okay. like, so technically like if you're, you're in a class, so say I teach in the morning class, I don't do this. I wear my red bar pretty much all the time. Cause I love teaching. It doesn't right. matter. Even if it's after class, hey, show me something. Sure. But if I teach morning class, and I'm wearing my red bar. But then huh. I want to come into a double dip and I want to come into night class. 
Like I'm in my white bar. Uh-huh. Like I'm there to this. I'm not there to show nobody nothing. I'm there for my work. Right. I think that's what it was kind of created for. But to me, it's also just a freaking another way for someone to get 30 bucks off you and buy it because, you know, <laughs> I had to do it too. Like it got me. I got a white bar of the black belt on there. I got one of those, but I always wear my red one because okay. I'm proud of my stripes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think that's, I mean, even with some, like I said, well, I've seen purple and I've seen brown with red, red bars. I think it's neat. You know what I mean? Like I heard, I don't know what federation this is, but I, I heard there was a jujitsu federation that outlawed purple belt instructors and brown belt instructors. Really? And I don't know what it was. Maybe it's Hickson's organization. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. So don't quote me, but I heard they outlawed, um, they outlawed, uh, purple belts and brown belts from teaching because it's like not just, and well, when I come up, I was like, I heard a purple belt can teach if he's under the lesson plan of his professor. Okay. Same with the brown belt. Like you can teach, but you have to kind of be under the lesson plan of right. your black belt at the time. So to me, I'm like, now that they're giving that away, I'm like, well, that's kind of going to hurt the sport because we're blessed to have a lot of black belts on cause we live close to the beach areas. Right. You in the Midwest, a purple belt is a big deal, dude. Right. Like, if you get your purple belt, you're dangerous. Until recently, people weren't migrating to middle America. Now Texas has kind of become... Yeah, well, as Gordon goes. Yeah. Yeah. He's the hotness. Um, and he'll probably win again next weekend. Tonight. Or tonight, right? Tonight. Tonight, yeah. So, I kind of want to see him lose. <sighs> And, and I got a beef. How come all the badass dudes of all time uh-huh. sound not badass? <laughs> <laughs> I, Mike Tyson, I, what are we doing? I just started playing the Gordon Ryan voice in my head. Gordon Ryan. <laughs> Anderson Silva. <laughs> what, what, what are we doing? Like, why are... Maybe that's why they're such badasses. I guess, dude. Like, well, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I just, that, that's just came to my brain right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why all the baddest dudes in the planet. And we're going to put, we're going to clip that. And we're going to post that. And I'm going to tag him. <laughs> I'm going to tag Tyson. I'm going to tag them all. Anderson, Tyson, Gordon Ryan. Like, and Gordon Ryan's voice sounds better than Tyson's and Anderson's. I don't know, man. There's, I think Tyson's speaking voice normally, but man, when he gets mad in the mode like that, you know, yeah, uh, <sighs> I wouldn't want to fuck with any. No, of them. but I'm saying like, Hey, <laughs> the toughest guys in the room, even John Jones. Yeah. It's not a tough voice. No, no. I, get, I don't know what I'm expecting. I'm expecting Sylvester Stallone. I got all my freaking great fighters, right? Just GSP sounds like a robot. Mah, mah, mah. Like what? What are we? <laughs> and he's my favorite fighter. Not a very intimidating voice. <laughs> not an intimidating voice. Matt Hughes, not an intimidating voice. Nate Diaz. <laughs> exactly. I don't even know what Nate Diaz says half the time. <laughs> I'm not going to do a Nate Diaz impersonation. <laughs> no, please. I was waiting. I was waiting. <laughs> it was coming. I was waiting. <laughs> Stalk the motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about gauntlets? Pro gauntlet. Now, my wife is not pro-gauntlet. She thinks it's barbaric. It's stupid. I can't believe it. I have two friends who are like, I can't believe you do gauntlets. That's stupid. I was in the military, and that's like hazing, and it's this. And like, Okay, first of all, let me cut you right there. If you're in the military and you, you disagree with hazing or you think it's barbaric, I question your military service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that, and I was in the Air Force, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, they're, they're, they're anti and which to me, I feel it's a rite of passage. I agree. I agree. It sucks. It's hey, it sucks. If you've never gauntleted, I I am embarrassed by my first gauntlet, just because I'm like I very flinchy. Definitely made noises, and then the dudes after me just walk straight through. I'm like fucking savage, dude. Like I don't know how you just did that. It, it, whatever you feel like you think is gonna feel like, yeah, it's, it hurts worse than that. Yeah, yeah. You got um, hit right in the nipple. Oh, dude, I still got nipple trauma yeah. from my boy Vader. All bad. I had to, so to me, and as a big guy, and this is this is, and this is what sucks about being a big guy in jiu-jitsu, okay? As being a big guy, you better not run that gauntlet, motherfucker. No. You got to walk. Yeah. You got to let the titties out. 
and you got to walk <laughs> it, okay? And you got to let them know, like, hey, I've been smashing you for years. This is your, this is your shot. Yeah. Dude. Just don't hit me in the nuts, and we're good. We're all good, baby. And you just got to walk and let everybody get their licks. Yeah. Walk it. And it sucks. I so when you it. hit the edge, yeah. when you hit the edge, you're just like, wow, I got to walk back. Dang. And you walk it back and it's. Psh, psh, psh. Let's be real. All, not all gauntlets are qu- created equal either. Your, your gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see my gauntlet? Have you it's seen it? Not yours specifically. Holy crap. Dude. Just your gym's gauntlet. It's brutal, dude. Is It's three gyms normally. In their one gym. Like that's. Yeah, but everybody's swinging like they're Barry Bonds on freaking juice. Yeah. Like they're like, the thread will be like, ooh, Matt's gauntlet tomorrow. Matt's gauntlet tomorrow. People be calling in at work. Like, I ain't going to work (laughs) tomorrow. Like, I've done that. When I know a boy's getting a gauntlet, I'm icing up the shoulder just to make sure it's nice. When I know one of my boys is going to a gauntlet, like, I'm sick. Like, yeah, you get your purple in a couple years. And Jay's like, oh, I'm going to my gauntlet tomorrow. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm calling it. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Matt's at our class. <laughs> hey, I was getting a gauntlet today. I can't, like, now that I'm black, but I don't have to do it anymore. And my last gauntlet was absolutely brutal. And at the end of this clip, we will show the highlight of that. There is a clip on YouTube of an old um, poncho gauntlet at Hendo's. Mm. That looks like it's a mile long. Bro, <laughs> I've seen guys with like sixty guys in their gauntlet. Fuck, and I've seen the guy. I've seen a guy cry. I've seen. I whimpered. I've seen. I said nipple fucker. I've seen a guy get put in the tears. I'm like, dude, that won't be me. I just kind of like cover my face and just like take it in my belly. And my buddy black belt Andrew Catalano, he has his black belt with his name. And it's on it. Embroidered. Freaking, it's freaking, <laughs> my belly said his name for like three days. <clears throat> my wife, not for the gauntlet. Not at all. There's nothing she loves about it. She thinks it's stupid. She can't believe I did it. But it's over, honey. I don't have to do it no more. I'm I'm for it. I, I think it's just, it's another one of those things that kind of bonds you. Trauma bonding. Yay. And like, it's just old school. And it's like, it's, but, but we're beyond, we're moved past it. I'm like, it's not, it's kind of like a. It's not like jumping you into your new belt. It's like you can jump, it's, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, welcome to the welcome to the new your new chapter, dude. We're gonna beat the white belt off you. So in the military, when you uh, you promote, um, they used to call it uh, blood stripes because you used to be your rank used to be a pin with mm. like sticky backs on it, and they would they'd pin your wings on, so they they pin your pin your rank on your shoulder. And people would punch that into your arm. So they're essentially piercing your arm with like a quarter inch of brass. It's not like that anymore. It's just, you know, you sew them onto your uniform, but they still punch you in the arm. So you get, you know, it's all the people in your your entire squadron. So there might be 75 people that are punching you in the arm that day. And to me, it's the first, it's the day, it's when you, the first, so like, let's say, you know, you, you know, you got promoted. You don't sew on until this date. They give you your, your date. So you go have all your uniforms altered and you just wear an old uniform until that date. And then when you come into work that day and all of a sudden you go from senior airman Wilson to Sergeant Wilson, the rest of that day is going to be hell for you. That blend, that gauntlet is going to be not at promotions. Yeah. Because mommy and poppy and kids. And right. Then no, nah, it's going to be your next class. So when I got my black belt, I have the promotions over the moon, super. I didn't know I was going to get it. I was the only one who got the black belt in that class, that promotion. Okay. It was pretty cool. Like six guys got theirs before me the month, the uh, six months before. Uh-huh. And I was the only one on that one. So I felt kind of special, um, even though it just worked out that way. Uh, so I'm like, after class, I'm like, my next class, I knew it was going to be. So I, I was like, text, I put a post on Facebook. I'll be at 5 p.m. class this day. So then everybody's like, oh, there it is. Boom. Everybody <laughs> like, dude, rolls in, right? And usually you do the gala after class. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I have the whole class. I'm rolling. We're just like drilling far side arm bars. And 
All of a sudden, Pancho goes, before we start rolling, everybody line up. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I was not ready for it to be, like, right in the middle. He's like, Matt's got a gauntlet. I was like, oh, man, all right. And then they lit me up like a 4th of July, dude. And But, like, when I was done, I was like, that was it. It was my last one. Right. You know, I did, I did one at purple. I did one at brown. I did black. My blue, there was no gauntlet. It was just the traditional takedown. Yeah, one. So I had that. I had that at promotion. So I've had both. It was gauntlet, and there. But I prefer the gauntlet. Yeah, because you remember who hit you. Yeah, and you're like, all right, because you have your video of your gauntlet because you're gonna post it, and then you're like, oh, you hit me hard. I go back to my gauntlet. Okay, all right. <laughs> I still go back to my gauntlet sometimes. Like, Making a list. I'm like, oh. Look at him. He's a white belt here. Look at him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took it easy. And then, you know, but as, like I said, as a big, you got to walk it. And also as a big, you better bring it because I've seen Poncho, our professor go see someone, not hit someone hard. Then put them in the gauntlet. No shit. He's like, if you don't hit good, right. if you don't like reward them for their new belt, you walk it. Right. I didn't look at it like that. I guess. Yeah. You're rewarding them. Yeah, it's a reward. Yeah. It's kind of like a reward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who are your influences in uh, coming up? Like, so w- when I come up, there was guys that always trying to model my game after, right? And I'm like, oh. To the, and I'd realize real quick, like, well, I can't do that. Right. That's, that's not. Andre Gaval is not my wheelhouse. <laughs> Even Bouchesha, he's so athletic. And yeah, does so much crazy scramble, so much like stuff. I'm like, I'm not that athletically gifted, so I had to like model my game. List. So I was, be, I'd be like Orlando Sanchez, I would be like, um, Adolfo Vieira. I saw guys like bigger guys, but like more like smash style, you yeah, know? even some early Jeff Munson. Like, there's some stuff that I would like the bigger guys that would just be real heavy on top. Those would be the guys that kind of model my game after Frank Mir, even in UFC. Um, are there any guys that you did? Early on, early on, I was a little more flexible. Um, so I would say then it was probably like a, a Cummings, maybe Gary Tonin. Mm. Something like that. Everybody models their game after somebody until they find their game. Yeah. And then they model their game after somebody who does their game at LE level. Right. Yeah. Um, now I, I'm just now getting to the point where I'm starting to figure out, and I, and I feel like this could change, but I, I, I feel like my current game is uh, I, I like to play half guard a lot. I don't mind it. It's not my, my preference would be to be on top, obviously. Right. So it's always, if we're starting standing, my goal is to take you down and end up on top. Well, you coach as a half guard guy. Right. Now, if I, I've, since, since, since this podcast has started, I've tried to challenge myself by pulling guard, which is not something I've ever done. And it's a struggle, but it, I'm getting better at it. But I don't like it. It's not enjoyable. Yeah, like I said, jujitsu is like tying your shoes. Yeah, you're five years old. You start tying your shoes. You got the concept. You're like, I know what I got to do with these laces. Right. And you're going around the the around the around the loop under the freaking tunnel. Pull it through. Oh, missed it. Right. Up. Oh, restart. Eventually, the more you do it, just pull that. Don't even have to look. So half guard is my is my go to. Um, I'm comfortable there. I don't really feel like I'm in a lot of danger. Um, I feel like I'm, <clears throat> I need to get better at uh, letting people pass it though. If I get a tight half guard, I'm usually pretty good at holding it and I can usually sweep before, but um, before someone passes, but if somebody starts passing and they're real aggressive with it, I'll struggle with it. Yeah. It's all about, that knee line. Yeah. If that knee line gets up on your thigh, you're... Mateo fucks me up. Mm. Blue belt Mateo. That kid, that kid's good. That kid fucks me up, man. <laughs> hey, man. He puts me in north-south and chokes me, and I just 
get choked is what happens. <laughs> like north south choke or like is it gee choke? Uh gee some sort of gee choke. I don't even know what he's doing. I just know he's choking me and it sucks. So and you're in from half, he's passes your half. Yeah. Well, let's try to put half on the other side. If some guy's passing you, could you probably like a side you like to pull half on? Yeah. And whether you want your right underhook or you want your left underhook. So if you're having trouble with a guy in class, this is for anybody. If you're having trouble with a guy in class, everybody's good at one spot, but right. they're probably two belts under what they are on this funky side. Gotcha. So why not practice on a lot of people pass to their left because they're right hand dominated. Mm -hmm. So everybody yeah. likes to go to the left. That's what he's doing too. Yeah. So try passing to your right. Just put that in your class and your house. Like I'm going to pass the right today. Like today all I'm doing is passing the right. And if you get good at passing your right, generally when you get in a tournament or you get into any kind of thing and that's your comfortable side now, right? That's not there. They're used to people passing to the left. Right. So they're let that defense is good. Right. So if you go to the right, that's that makes it bad. So if you put half on Mateo on the side that makes him go past left knee slice, right? He's going to have, he might not be as good. We'll try. <laughs> Don't watch this till later. <laughs> this is, we got two weeks. So hey, now you can watch it. So, yeah, I was trying to like, and that's 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 problems for me too. Like I have my good sides. Everybody has their good side. Everybody has their funny side. You know, I have a problem where my leg doesn't bend anymore because my yeah. surgeries. So there's some things I can't do with my right leg anymore. You've mentioned in the past that you like to play um, lasso a lot. Does which is it your left knee that's bad? It's my, my right knee is bad. And that's the one you lasso with? No, it used to be. Oh, really? Okay. But like I, it got so bad, I couldn't really do it with it no more. So I switched to my left. So now my left is good. Okay. My lasso was my right leg. And then so I went to left, which kind of helped me out because I'm right-handed. So having the lasso in on their right arm frees my right hand. So when I do go underneath, my, my basically it's a right bench press. So, like, it gives my strong arm to push. Nice. So, it helps out with the traditional lasso sweep. But I used to be only right. But because of my injury, it forced me to learn on my bad side, which is on my left leg. So, but now, like, even if I try to mess around and go with my right leg, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'd rather have my left. Really? That's weird. It's just become your preference. It's become point. my preference to go left. Hmm. I, um, I need, I need some more lasso. Um, I, after that, that lesson that Jay taught, I, I played it for like a week after that and then I stopped, but I enjoyed it while I was doing it. So I need to dive back. We definitely got to get together and roll. Yeah. That's got to happen soon. Um, and then we can just work on it. Yeah. That's I'm down. Um, now that I'm freaking, my home life has kind of slowed down. It was like a wild week with the kid, but, uh, after that's, I'm available. So hopefully I can get, uh, one of these evenings off and I'll just go down there again. There you go. And we'll just get That'd it be rad. Yeah. yeah. So what else, man? Like, uh, you plan on competing anytime soon, any, any coming up soon. So I was planning on competing at world league. Um, that, that I think first? is that I think, yeah, I think it's like, in a, I'm not weight wise. It's my only holdback. And, um, so I was, I was having a conversation with my wife this last week about it. And I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have a wife that's supportive of, supportive of me competing um, and will meal prep for me and keep me accountable to make sure that I'm making the weight. <clears throat> I walk around at 220, 222. I don't want to compete at that. I'd like to, in an ideal world, I'd like to cut down to like 203 and compete at 208. That'd be cool. That'd be cool for me too. I'd love to be 203. Yeah. But the last time I competed at World League, I competed at 220, so I cut to 215. It took me like I like three weeks of just dieting and not eating like shit. I eat like shit. That's my biggest, my biggest hold. And you, and you gotta think to yourself, like, it doesn't matter right now. Your wins and losses. Yeah. It's just moments. Yeah. Here. We're here for moments. Part of me wants to do the cut though, because it's to prove something to myself that I can do it, that I do have the discipline to do that. That's hard. It is. It's so hard, especially when you work in. When I did it last time, I was very strict. I knew I was like, Hey, look, it's three weeks. 
I just got to fucking hunker down and do it. And I originally signed up for the 208. But World League will let you change your weight class up to like three days before the event. So I was like, I got to get down to 208. I think I, cu- I cut as low as 208, but I could not. I, I would have to make 203 to weigh in mm-hmm. at 208 with a gi on. And the gi, yep. So I'm like, I'm like not going to make it. So I ended up changing it a few days before, but like there was no Red Bulls anymore. There was no more soda. It was, I was drinking a gallon of water That's a day. That's the key right there, yeah. soda. Yeah. You cut soda? Yeah. There's like seven pounds. The, um, no, like on the way to work, it's like, I'll get a Red Bull and I'll get like a hostess cupcakes or some shit like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that's my breakfast in the morning time before I go to work. So during that time I was intermittent fasting. I wasn't eating till like, it was like, I was eating a little early. It was like 10 o'clock. My wife was meal prepping all my meals. So I was hitting macros. She was uh, have dinner for me when I got home from class, like very balanced meals. And it was like, I was intaking like maybe 900 to a thousand calories a day and burning way more than that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, whereas normally like I like Chipotle and Chipotle is like 1,200 calories my meal. Mm-hmm. So it's like I was eating less in a day than I would normally eat in like one Chipotle meal. So when I did that, I, I was able to cut. And, and like I, I saw like my – I was less bloated. I mean, um, you feel great. Inflamed. You yeah, feel great. Oh, 100%. <laughs> but then as soon as I got a taste of Red Bull again, mm. I, I fucking broke me. I was like, oh, I'm back. I'm back. I did so good. So when the dark – because we can't say the word. But when the darkness of 2020 hit, yes, I got hit with the darkness. Oh, okay, okay, bad, <laughs> bad hospital. Oh shit, put me out. 105 fever for like a week. Damn, I almost had to say goodbye to like my family and stuff. It was no real shit. bad. ARDS lungs shot. Um, still have nodules on my lungs. I have to get checked once a year. Like my cardio was trash. I was really wrecked. My weight dropped. So right now. I weighed in this morning about 257. Okay. Okay. So I got down to 218. Oh, wow. And just like horrible, dude. Horrible. The not, one, not a good 218. Not a good 218. But like my taste went gone. When the first one came, okay. I lost my taste. Yeah. So like soda tastes like crap. Yeah. Yeah. Everything tastes horrible. And that's how I knew I got it. I was like, what's wrong with drink? And next thing you know, I'm wrecked. I got it twice the second time it was that. And I was like, oh. So I was like, I'll never drink soda again. Yeah. And then, like you said, after everything has been seated and life got good again, I tried one and bag on the rails, dude. Your boy, <laughs> your boy got a problem when it comes to the soda. And I need to quit that shit. But I think I, I'm going to. I got to really step it up. Now that I have my son, I don't want to be that. I, I want to be like something he like. Models himself after. That's my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what I want. Yeah. And I feel like I'm there, but I feel like I could be better. I think we all could be better. 100%. So, yeah, I want to compete. So, okay. So, what sparked it, what sparked the desire was... Um, the BJJ Balance patch on your gi uh, podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Patch we, on your gi. We need to make... We need to make uh, design those because I, I can screen print here. I can screen print those all you day need long. Do you need that? So, like, oh, that's the guy from the podcast. Yeah. Um, so if level black wants to send me a competition, gi- <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, the, um, I, I had a, a, a role with, um, a purple belt from your school that, that attends mine every once mm-hmm. in a while. Uh, and he hit me up in DMS afterwards and was like, you should compete. And, he he said he's had some encouraging words for me. I'm not going to go all into what he said, but it was like it felt when you have somebody that you respect, whose jujitsu game you respect, and who who takes the time to reach out to you and say like, "You gave me some problems today, and you're a belt lower than me." And my goal, speaking as him, is to compete and to win worlds this mm-hmm. next year. I think you should have the same goal. It was inspiring. So I think that's. I'm going to, I'm going to get through the holidays. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to try to make some 
definitive changes. I'm, I don't go all ham for like holiday meals. And sh- I don't, I don't put on a bunch of weight or anything like that, but like, <laughs> but I do, but I do want to eat and I don't want to starve myself and torture myself during the time. Like that's my favorite food is, is that shit. You know what I mean? The fucking ham and the turkey and gravy. And mm-hmm. all that. And I'm, gravy not, and I'm not a Thanksgiving guy. I'm not Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving's overrated. Um, I like Halloween. And then it's get me to Christmas, baby. Okay. It's like Thanksgiving with presents. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, like, I, I just like Thanksgiving, you get three shit football games. I eat all the veggie tray before the meal's even done. The turkey's a little dry. And then I, the best thing about Thanksgiving is the freaking sandwiches late at night when no yeah. one's awake. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, but like to me, like, get me to Christmas. So yeah, once I get through that though, I think, I think January, I'm going to, I've never done like, a, I've never been the new year's resolution type, but I think this year I'm going to make a realistic one about just my eating habits and try not to be a fucking fat piece of shit. And I'm going to uh, compete this year. I, I want maybe this year. Now that this little baby leaves coming, I might be able to throw one out in there. 23 or 24. I might be able to compete one here in 23. Depending, depending on the location. What's left? Uh, I don't know. That's the thing. I don't know. I have to look. Yeah. I don't but uh, maybe knock one out. I wanted to do one, the World League, but with my wife and the kid. And I was just like, dude, there's like so much. I was not training. I didn't train at all last week. It's like the first time yeah. this year that I didn't train the whole week. Yeah, but you had a baby. It's fucking understandable. And like I said on the last podcast, I washed my belt. So now I don't even know what, I, who knows what we're getting. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to get tomorrow, dude. This is, <laughs> this is rough. But uh, yeah, definitely want to get after it, want to get out there again. I think I need to like be more about it. Like I've, like I've said, and then in the later podcast, we're going to talk about like competition mindset. But for me, it's like, you got to be in the moments, like not competing to win or lose, but living in the moment. Yeah. So one day you're gonna look back and be like, "Dude, look at me! I did that. That was that dude." Do you, do you have matches that you vividly remember? Yeah, my losses. Yeah, my losses. I'm. I got put to sleep at Pans. That sucked. Talk about that on one of the podcasts. Um, I um, went up against uh, this guy named Dennis Andra. Um, shout out to him. He was like purple belt world champ, See. and I went against him at purple belt. And had a good match, but he beat me. And I remember like, two out of three, he beat me twice. And I was like, fuck, man. I haven't had to go against anybody that's Brazilian yet. So <laughs> fortunate there. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Steve from Orange County. <laughs> uh, at the NBJJF uh, two years ago, um, I had no smoke in my division. And first time coming back from the, from the darkness. Okay? okay. And that was my first tournament back. So my lungs were still not great. Right. And, uh, I'm like, oh, six, it's masters, six minute round. Everything's going to be great. I'm in the bullpen. There's no smoke for me. Poncho comes up to me, grabs my shoulder and goes, this is going to be fun. I'm like, okay, I got you something. I'm like, okay. He puts me in the adults division. <laughs> so like I get the takedown. Boom. Everything's great. Wow. Boom. Get the takedown. Like I knew the guy's going to pull guard. He looked at my, I got it. I got two points. I'm up two nothing. I'm like, okay, I got like four or five guys in this bracket. I'm not saying I'm going to stall. But we're going to conserve this energy because my right. lungs ain't good, and we're going to keep make sure this tank is okay. So, boom, I pass. Next thing you know, he's got me in spider, and he's doing all this stuff. He's got a his little guy. It's open. Class, oh, okay. And he's got a crazy guard. Like, I'm like, dude, I cannot pass this little guy. This is that black belt? This is black belt, yeah. Okay. Adult black belt. So, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm up to nothing. Everything's good. And then, you know, i like, okay, after a crazy scramble, I scramble for like two minutes. It was crazy. Right. I look at the clock. It's only been, and it says, well, which I'm thinking is a six minute fight. It says five minutes and 42 seconds. <laughs> and I'm like, what the? F-? I was like, <laughs> this is only 18 seconds. In. <laughs> I was like, that was not 18 seconds. I got a takedown, a two minute scramble. Like what happened? What had happened was it's adult division. That was <laughs> eight minute round oh shit <laughs> and i was like oh this is not good that's like i look over i look over and my boys like vader and clint they're all like phil they're like yeah yeah and i'm all oh guys <laughs> that was a big mistake zero percent of me trained for eight minute rounds go the distance i don't think i won i didn't win it maybe i won i think maybe i won 
that one. And then the next one, I was just, I won that one. The next one, I was just complete trip. <laughs> done. Like, the Gassed. guy beat me, and then that was it. <laughs> That's like, that was my. Yeah, that was that. my first tournament at Black Belt, I think. Yeah, what what division does it turn to three minute rounds? That's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't know, dude. But um, hopefully this week I'm back, back to training, everything back to normal. Teaching Monday and Wednesday. Baby's here. Don't have to worry about that no more. That really threw a wrench, wrench in my game. Yeah. And uh, my, my, what are your goals before we exit out here? What are your jujitsu goals for the week? Give me. Three, give me something that you're going to do this week that you don't like to do, but you're going to force yourself to do this week in training. <sighs> and everybody should be setting a goal of what they're going to do. And I'm going to say mine. And I think it's how we're going to close every podcast. I like this. I got to think about this shit before. Mine, though. I'll go first. Okay. My goal this week is I will not be on the wall. Okay. I will not. I will not be on the wall this week. I will roll. Every round. Four to five rounds, every class. Force myself, even if I'm completely shit tank gassed, I will not be on the wall this week. That is my goal. Um, I'm going to do two. One is going to be I don't want to get submitted by anybody that's blue belt or below. Okay. Um, two, I would like, I got to get better at counting points. Mm. During rolls, um, I'd like to. I would like to outscore a purple belt. Okay. Good I don't goals. know. I don't know that it can happen. But we're gonna make. We're gonna give it a shot. All right. That sounds good. Everybody set your goals this week, and uh, we'll see. Uh, it's always good to set goals. Whether it's like I want to get four arm bars this week, or I want to. I'm not gonna tap today. I'm not gonna tap to. You know. Obviously, tap though if you if your shit's stretched. Right. But like, just set little games for yourself. That always helps your game. That helps you. That you that creates that bunny rabbit thing I talked about earlier. Um, it makes you better. So today, I'm not gonna be on the wall this week. That's my goal. So, I the um when you had mentioned um in one of the earlier episodes in regards to uh having those games, um I went to this open mat this last week with that in mind. And I was like, I'm not tapping to anybody. Like I don't, and it was an, it was a no gi open mat. So I don't know. I don't know the fucking levels of anybody that mm-hmm. was in there. Uh, can't, what, who, fu- what can't we trust? Yeah, you cannot trust rash cards. <laughs> you cannot trust rash cards. Yeah. In no gi jiu-jitsu. So, um, yeah, it, it was, it was my goal. It, it, I didn't even go in there with the goal to like to, to sub anybody. I'm a blue belt. I don't think that like, I'm still trying to master fundamentals. Mm. I'm still trying to, master just getting to good advantageous positions before I attack. So I went in there. I didn't get submitted. That was my goal. I was able to definitely get backs, get side control, get mount. Um, I didn't, I don't even think I even went for any attacks to be honest with you. Um, just tried to survive and control yeah, and breathing. Right. Right. And I, and I rolled, <sighs> I want to say it had to have been seven, seven or eight like rounds, like five minute rounds with 45 second breaks in between them. So I'm, I'm stoked with, and none of them were easy rounds. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm stoked that I was able to, to do that. And by setting your goals, go ahead. I had a flow roll. It was no. so awkward. No, you didn't. I swear to God. Come on, dude. It was what? so awkward. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> Tell me. Just talk do, about it. Do you know when Ricky Bobby is in the beginning of the movie, he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands? That, the uh-huh. awkward, that yeah. was how awkward I felt. <laughs> so this kid comes up to me and he goes. <laughs> want to flow a little? He goes, you want to flow a little? Yeah. And I was like, okay, I guess, you know. I think, actually, what I think he said is, do you want to roll light? And I'm like, okay. Those are different things in my Right. My opinion. So we're rolling and it's just like, it, it's awkward. It's like, do I, do I, do I sweep you? Do I not sweep you? Do I like pretend like I'm going to sweep you? But then you, uh, I, hey, it's just, hey, it's a waste of time. It was so awkward. It's a waste of time, guys. I can't, I can't express right. it. I just, the, to me, it's like. Oh, here's your neck. <laughs> Never mind. <It's> just <laughs> like, hey, man, no, I want it, dude. You gave it to me. I'm taking it. <laughs> it was it was very awkward, and I I I don't know that I'm ever gonna do that again. 
<laughs> well, you will because <laughs> someone will ask you. You're like, no one else here. But uh, another thing good about setting yourself goals for the week or goals for your classes is, look, it. I said I don't want to sit on the wall this week. Okay. So what's that entail? That entails that, like, your boy's going to probably be a bully this week. And I'm going to be heavy top because I want to put my, I want to be successful on my mission. Right. So I'm not going to be upside down, my kissing my kneecaps. Right. I'm going to be trying to be heavy, stay on top because I want to, I've set this goal for myself, which will force me to be more aggressive. It's not a week for you me, to experiment. And get me into ready to like, okay, get back in that competition mindset. Right. Okay. If you're like, oh, I'm going to collect arm bars. Well, you're probably going to want to pull guard. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it's going to force you to get to spots that you shouldn't have to get to. Right. So I'll, I'll say that in my classes. I'll be like, if I see like, if I saw you going with the brown belt, but like, Hey, Kenny, all you got to do is survive and you win. You have to get an arm bar. I'll tell that to the brown belt. If you don't, he wins. And like, <laughs> you ain't getting arm bar. Right. right. And it makes the round more competitive. So, yeah. Anyways, man, it's been good. Um, episode five in the books, right? Yeah. I'm losing count, dude. That's five. That's five. That's five. There's a hot nickel right there. My name is Matt from Most Nation. This is Kenny, and we'll catch you around. Always. Follow. Follow us. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Spotify. Anywhere there's podcast platforms or streaming things. We're on YouTube, wherever. BJJ Balance. Give us a follow. Check us out. We're growing faster. Um every day so and thank you guys for that and thank you uh, share yeah. us share, share us. us if you catch the clips on ig share them put a little comment under and it why you share the comments it. yeah we're talking in the comments so we're there so dm us you got questions anything we're here for it so thanks again guys and we'll catch you around oh